Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Um, we're having a little trouble with the screen, so it takes a little bit to get a reset. So while, um, while it hopefully warms up, I'll make up whether or not I can read a couple things here. Um, you know, in your bulletin, there are a couple things on. Next Sunday, we're going to have a pop up um, here after church. So if you can hopefully stay and attend and bring something. Um, and the church will be providing um, some meat, so therefore, if you just want to bring, um, can't there's anything we need more than the bread? Uh, especially uh, butter, butter, lemon pie. Butter, butter, lemon pie. <laughs> <laughs> okay. um, and there are some, there are some other things that if you want me to list, I can. But, um, anyway, I thought I'd read a couple cards here for you. The one here is um, says, dear church family. I would like to say God bless everyone who had a part in Clark's memorial service. To Nancy on the organ, to Lori running this video that my granddaughter Morgan put together, the men who set up the tables, Crystal for preparing and organizing the food dinner, the ladies for the desserts they prepared, Dorothy for decorating the tables, Kenton for conducting the service and for singing the beautiful song, the man in the middle, and also the beautiful dish garden from the church. I'm sure we will all miss Clark, but I know he is in a better place. God bless you all, brother. If anyone was here, those who were able to be here for that service, it was, uh, the video especially was pretty touching on a lot of the family pictures and over the years, and um, just a special time. Um, also, Pat gave me um, something I was pretty thought appropriate to read. Um, if you remember, um, we had a girl here by the name of Sadie, okay, a few years ago, and she actually is a missionary in Hungary. Well, because of that, she, um, they're very close to what's happening in Ukraine. So I'm going to go ahead and read this because it's pretty appropriate for this time. And it says, her, the title of her um, letter that we get is called Hungry for More. And it says, Stories of Sadie's Service. She says, I don't know how to write about what is happening without heartache. As I'm sure you have heard, Russia is actively and aggressively attacking Ukraine. The past couple of days have felt like years. I read updates on my friends and loved ones who are running for their lives or are staying behind to provide help and comfort to Ukrainians around them. I watched videos in stunned silence of the neighborhood where I lived in Kiev being bombed. Tanks rolling through the streets, gunfire in the distance. I think of my friend Julia, who has opened her home in the west of Ukraine to anyone who needs shelter. I am humbled by her generous heart at this time. I think of my friend Narina, who writes to encourage those like her who have chosen to stay. I pray that I can hold even a sliver of hope in my day-to-day -day life. Please continue to pray for Ukraine. Pray for those who are displaced by the war and for those who are choosing to stay. Pray for the sorrow and grief that come with the losses of war. Pray ultimately for peace. Pray for level heads and de-escalation. Pray for hope and open hearts. Pray for the Ukrainian church in the middle of chaos. In the end, just pray. Um, so I'll go ahead and read the rest also. She says, how do I see God at work right now? Some amazing things have been happening at English Club. In the beginning of February, we were discussing the topic of God's love. A boy who has been attending our English clubs for a couple of years spoke up. He explained that he likes discussing scripture together. He finds what we talk about logical and nice that something is stopping him from fully believing in God. Sarah, the intern, was spurred on by the Spirit to answer some of those questions that he had. Then another student shared her thoughts. She said she believes in God is out there somewhere in the universe, but couldn't understand why he would love and care about her. We were able to speak into this girl's life about how God really does love and care about her. English love feels like a spiritually sensitive place right now. Due to other several factors, the Hungry Field will only have one English camp this summer. 
We also found out this past month that the school where we normally host the camp will not be available to us in July. Please be praying that the right staff will come and we would have a full camp of students and then we would find another location. Thank you for your continual love and support. I have received so many lovely messages of encouragement and prayer. Prayer really makes a difference. Thank you, Sadie. So, I um, just thought that was especially appropriate to thank you, Pat, for giving to me for um, this time for them. Again, it's easy for us to go through our daily lives and not realize what people in other places are going through in situations like this, being displaced from the home or choosing to stay and um, being in the middle of it. Uh, so, we need to keep them in prayer as we do that. So, this morning, let's um, prepare our hearts to worship them this morning as uh, the ladies pray for you. one of you here, and we trust that you came to really worship the Lord. You know, I've thought a lot of times, Lord, help me to worship deeper. Help me to think and concentrate and think more deeply on what I'm singing and what we're talking about. Help me to worship you more deeply. All right, let us take our hymnals and turn to page number 161, and we're going to sing that Song. It's familiar. You probably don't even need your book. I will sing of the mercies of the Lord forever.
we'll sing of the mercies of the Lord. All right? Let us turn that over to page number 410. And on the screen also. <coughs>
for sure. Thank you. All right, now let us turn over to page number 295. <coughs>
these, we need the Bible. In times like these, oh, be not idle. Be very sure, be very sure, your anger grips, holds and grips a solid rock. All right. In times like these,
God, uh, that God would help him, and it seems to be his testimony was that. Also, uh, Doug Flickinger, we need to continue to remember Doug and he, as he battles cancer. And then we want to pray for Chuck this morning as he ministers to us from the Word, about the Word, and whatever God lays on his heart. I remember some of the stories that he's told. I could tell him some of them because I remember them so well. They're so, so real and so touching and so powerful. Okay, let's uh, look to the Lord in prayer. Father in heaven, we come to you in Jesus' name. We come to you, Lord, because we need you. We need you desperately. But before we tell you what we have need of, we want to tell you, Lord, how much we love you and how much we appreciate you, how much we appreciate what you've done for us, how you've answered prayer, so many answers to prayer, so many victories in the lives of individuals. And we thank you, Lord, that you're not done. You're still working. You're still working in people's lives, and we're grateful for that. We're thankful for the testimonies that we hear. We're thankful for the people you brought through surgeries. And we see this morning, oh God, and we're grateful and thankful that you brought Dawn out and that she's doing well and, and coming along. And we just thank you for that. And we pray, Lord, that you would receive our thanks for how you've helped Virginia and strengthened her and, and brought her back to your house. And we worship you for all of these things, Lord. But we worship you most of all because you loved us first. And you died for us, Lord. And we were singing the song a little bit ago, Tell me the story of Jesus. Write on my heart every word. Help us, Lord, to continue to think about the things that you have done for us and the things that we've read in your word. Lord, that they would be written on our heart and stamped on our minds that whenever we have temptations and trials, that you're the one that will help us, Lord, when we call upon you. You're the one that can forgive us of our sins and blot out our transgressions and give us a new life and a new hope and in strength, Lord, to live for you. We pray this morning that you would help us as we worship you today to receive all that you intended for us to receive in this service this morning. We're not here by accident, Lord. We're here on purpose. We're here to serve you and worship you. And then we pray for all these people, the names that we have mentioned. Lord, they're depending on us to pray, and we're depending on you to help them and touch them, Lord. We can't do it. We can't help them except by coming to you and offering their names. And so, Lord, we pray that you would help in their lives, in their situations, help their doctors and the medical teams that work with them, Lord. And we pray then now that you would undertake for Chuck as he ministers to us this morning, a little later. We pray that you would touch him, strengthen him, give him liberty. Give him the liberty that you can give and help us when we're talking about Jesus and your word. We pray, Father, that you'd be, help us to be grateful for all of this. And we'll praise you and thank you in your holy name. Amen. All right. Charlie is going to sing a song by request. Somebody requested this song for Charlie. Sang it a few weeks ago. But they ask if he would sing it again. He's going to do that now. Each page is kind. 
thank you, Trevor, for that. Um, so this morning, as Kenton mentioned, mentioned, we um, are privileged to have uh, Chuck Tubbs here with represent the Gideons. I think it was actually in December that we were scheduled um, to have him speak. And um, Saturday afternoon, he called me and said they had a medical emergency with his wife, so they weren't able to be here. So he was hoping to reschedule again. So a few weeks ago, he called and said he was able to be here. So um, we've had Gideon speakers here before, but it's nice to have Chuck back. And you know, myself, I always, again, one of these things we take for granted, how many of these organizations that are volunteer-based, okay, whether it be the food cupboards or whether it be the Gideons and things that people give with their time, um, to go out and represent God's work in different manners. So um, for that, we want to say thank you to Chuck, and um, we'll turn the service over to him right now. I'd like to say we will be taking an offering once he's finished. church. Boy, you hit it right the first time. <laughs> Moses found God in a burning bush in the desert mountaintop. But I found God under a bush next to a trash can in the snow in Milan, Italy. This is a testimony of Maria, a woman from the land of Italy. Maria said she was married shortly after graduating college. Marriage lasted two years, no children. For the next year or so, Maria could find no happiness, no security. She got up one February morning, walked to the bus stop to catch a ride to work, and it snowed during the night. So she walked to the bus stop and sat at the end of a bench, looking at the snowscape, which was very beautiful. As she was looking, she looked under a bush. Something's unusual, but didn't look like anything that should be there. So she walked over, dusted the snow off the object, and found a little book, a New Testament. She put it in her pocketbook, got the bus, went to work. That evening after the supper dishes were done, she went in and got her pocketbook and the bills, and she was going to pay the bills. Opened up the pocketbook, got her checkbook, and she noticed a little book. So she took it, put it on the table, paid her bills, got up, made herself a cup of tea. She went back and picked up the book. And Opened it up. There's a who the Gideons were. She never heard of them. So she read that. And she thumbed through it. And there's pages of help. Help in times of need. Help with life's problems. Gives you the verse and the page number. So she went through it, found a few things that she thought pertained to her. Went to the page and read them. She scanned the book and went to the very back. And there was a decision to receive Christ as your personal Savior. She read the her Bible verses and went with it. It didn't make too much sense to her. She couldn't 
quite understand it. She knew a few Christian friends, so she got together with them and they talked it over. They said, well, come to church with us Sunday. We'll go to Sunday school first, then church. And we'll introduce you to the pastor. So she went. She enjoyed it. So she started going to the church very regularly. She enjoyed the Sunday school message of the church. And she got into a Bible study at the church. And she became more active in, her, in the church activities. And about six months later, she decided, she went back to the back of that Bible, read everything over, and she signed her name in the Bible and the date. And that was her spiritual birthday. She accepted Jesus Christ as her personal Savior. So time went on and she, about six months later she met a man at the church, a Christian man. They were married, had three daughters. And I can see by the church here that most of you know what that entails. Time fleets by so fast. Their little ones, a couple of days are this high, but to go. So her husband and her one night doing their Bible study for Sunday school. It had to be in Judges. They were studying about Gideon. She looked at her husband, she said, you know, I never wrote to Gideon's a testimony and tell him how I appreciate it never saved my life. So she got pen and pencil and started it out. She said, I'd love to shake the hand of the man that Gideon had handed that little Bible to somebody who apparently didn't want it. He's going to throw it in the trash can. He never made it. She says, that Bible saved my life. It led me to a marriage that was fruitful. Three daughters. And we know where we stand. Thank you, Gideons, for being there and spreading the gospel. Amen. Yes, Moses found God in a burning bush in a desert mountaintop, but I found God under a bush next to a trash can in the land of Italy. This is a testimony of Mr. Fred Gore. <coughs> Up at Grantham's Landing in New Vernon, about four miles north of uh, Sandy Lake, is a restaurant, Grantham's Landing restaurant. There's about 15 of us that would have a Christian prayer breakfast every Friday morning there at 8 o'clock. 15 of us. But five of us were Gideons. And we asked Fred, Fred would you i like to join the Gideons. Not at this time, I'm too busy. While they would ask the Gideons, same thing. So we came in this Friday morning. It was the first Friday morning after the Stone War Fair. And after we was through, Fred says, I've got something to tell you guys. Fred is a member of Oak Grove United Community Church just outside of Mercer. Oak Grove has a prayer station under the grandstand during Stone Warfare. A prayer station. But they also hand out free water. Cool water in a jug. For anybody that's passed by and wants water. So Fred said, I had the evening shift last Friday night at the prayer station. And the gentleman comes up to me and says, can I have a bottle of water? Sure. Fred hands him a bottle of water. They were talking. He says, I have some spiritual questions I'd like to talk to somebody. Fred said, let's go back to the back of the booth. So they talked. The man said, uh, when I was a 
young boy, she said, I love going to Sunday school, vacation Bible school, and I go to church every once in a while. He said, I was active in the children's programs. And about the age of 14, I just seemed to drift away from it all. He says, I was going through the fair, and he says, I was walking around and seeing what's here, and I went through the commercial building. And as I was walking through, a gentleman came and said, Sir, would you like a free copy of God's Word? Yeah, I'll take one, he said. He took it, put it in his pocket, went out. Walked around the fair, he said, and he got tired and found a, some shade under a tree. He said, I sat there and got that Bible, opened it up, and helps in the front. He got the plan of salvation in the back, and he said, I read that, all of that. He said, it took me back so many years. He said, I'd like to discuss this with you. So Fred said, we sat there and talked, and I witnessed to him. When he was through, he said he liked to accept Christ as his personal Savior. And Fred told him that he'd find a Bible-believing church, get baptized. He said, thank you. He went on his way. Fred said, I thought you'd like to know that. He said, uh, you Gideons do a lot of work over there. And how many times do you hear a feedback? Very seldom do we hear. We pass them out. But very seldom we get a feedback. This is a feedback to picture. you. Want to dig in there just a little more. When you hear prayers answered here that we heard this morning, what's that want you to do? Get closer to Christ. So Fred said, hey Chuck, I said, what? He said, we need that since Friday morning. He says, I'm not breaking a membership application for the Gideons. I said, I can do one better than that, Fred. I said, I'll bring it. But next Friday night's our monthly camp meeting. Would you like to come to that camp meeting? He says, yes, I would. So Fred came and joined the Gideons that night. And as he ever acted, we can't get enough of these in his hands. He's giving them out all the time. It's an act. So it's good to hear when you pray for somebody and they come back and you see the Lord's answered a prayer. Amen. Yes. So who are these Gideons? The Gideons are an international Christian organization made up of Christian professional and businessmen and their wives. <coughs> What is, <clears throat> what is the ministry of the Gideons? It's the same as Christ commanded of his disciples over 2,000 years ago. The book of Matthew, chapter 28, verse 19. Go, make disciples up and spread the gospel to all the nations. Amen. And that's what the Gideons are doing. The Gideons are established in 201 countries around the world. Due to COVID, the handing out of Bibles has only gone down to 52 million. It's gone down, believe me. But we're still out there. And Christ is working and getting the word out, even through that. Last year, in our camp, Mercy East Camp, which your church is part of, at the Stone Warfare this year, we handed out 494 scriptures. Amen. Good. At four baccalaureate services for graduating seniors in high schools, four high schools, we gave out 227 testaments, eyeball to eyeball. Amen. At the uh, Mercer County Motet, the auxiliary handed out 13 testaments to a graduating class of licensed practical nurses there. <coughs> and it's just fabulous to give these out and see how happy this goes out to some of these people. And a few people will say, most of them, when you hand these out at the schools and high schools, oh yeah, but the high school uh, baccalaureate, you hand these out. Kids take them and go. You have
have some kids that will look you square in the eyeball and say they're Christians. They say thank you very much. That's that's a great feeling. Sure. The cost of a Bible to get out to the world is five dollars. Cost of a Testament, dollar twenty-five. And every penny received from the churches goes directly to the purchase of scripture for delivery around the world. Everybody received this morning to the Gideons goes to Scripture and nothing else. The Gideons support their own organization through dues and other means. One of those means is the Gideon card program. It consists of three main cards, an in-memory card, a recognition card, and thinking of you. These cards are out on the display at a table out in the hallway there. They're free. Take one. Take two. They're free. But when you want to honor somebody with the Bible, or a pen, you have multiple Bibles, each Bible is five dollars. And then that money goes directly to scripture purchase. April of 1941, President Franklin D. Roosevelt wrote a letter to the Gideon's International Headquarters. He says, could you please give a New Testament to each new member recruited for the United States Military Services? Gideon's answered back. They could. That was 81 years ago. 81 years. And everybody entering the military service still received the Testament. So 81 years. Niles was a businessman in the Gideon that lives in Helsinki, Finland. Niles had to go to Brussels, Belgium on business for his company. This was a critical meeting for his company, whether it even survived. So in the morning he had to catch the flight, he got up early and went to the airport, checked in his baggage and he was walking up to his boarding gate. So the restaurant was open at that early in the morning he says, well, I've got some time. I'll go in and have breakfast. He went in and ordered his breakfast. He noticed the waitress was, had some red eyes and looked like she'd be crying. And he could sense something was wrong. So he had breakfast. <coughs> he knew he should have talked to the woman, but he wanted to make sure he was on that flight. It had to be. So he was kind of out of the Hayden Bill, walking up to his gate. The voice told him, go back and witness that one. He thought, right, I got to make that flight. He kept walking. The voice had it again. And you know where the voice came from. Go back and witness that one. Third time, you can see the gate. We had to go, go back to the words of that woman. He stopped, turned around, and walked all the way back to the restaurant. Went in. It's no hard to anybody in a restaurant. The woman came over. He said, "I'd like a cup of coffee." She brought it. He said, "I can see you have some problems. You've been crying. And you don't seem to be yourself." You So he said, you just said, now I can talk to you. Wasn't that busy? She said, yes. So he said, you tell me what the problem was and she let me know. So he went to the store and brought portions of the Bible, verses to her and that. And he says, there's a plan of salvation. 
in the back. Would you like to read those over? She said, well, read them. She said, no, you read them to me. So she did. He explained what they meant. And she says, I would like to have eternal life. So she signed the book. He dated it. He gave it to her. He says, now here's your spiritual birthday. She thanked him. So he leaned back and he enjoyed his coffee. He knew he was <coughs> right. So he said, well, then he's crying over spilled milk. So he started walking back and he got up to the gate went out and said, well, when's the next flight to Belgium? <coughs> Brussels. Well, he said, you have a pass. You have a pass. She said, yeah, but the plane left. She looked at it. She said, no, it hasn't. It's still out in the dock. He said, what? He said, yeah, it had a minor problem. They're trying to fix it. Has it left yet? So he says, well, okay. So he went. Got on the plane, he's happy as a little lark. He got in his seat and just got comfortable. The captain took the plane to one. He said, well, he said, we found what the problem was. It's fixed. He says, fasten your seat belts. He said, we're going to start the engine. We'll try to make up some time. Then it hit him again. Well, you do right when God's calling you. has a happy ending. So he made us. Trip. Not there in time for his business. That was Nels. Had a good turnout. He did what he was supposed to do, brought the word of God to a lady, witness to her. Eighty one years military. Recruits still get the Bible. Fred Core doing his job at the Stone Moor Fair, led a man to Christ. He told us, I don't tell us about it, which made us feel do it. We're doing our job, we're doing our job. And he became a Gideon. And then Maria, finding that Bible, well, she did. The letter to salvation. This all had to happen from the Gideons, between the Gideons and the Christian churches, the Protestant, the Christian evangelical churches, through the free will offering to the Gideons. This Bible goes out here into the community and around the world. So thank you, Randy, for inviting the Gideons to be part of your service this morning. Brothers and sisters in Christ, may the Lord richly bless you and keep you in the palm of his hand. Amen.
and I thank you for that. Um, other than that, uh, we don't have any other announcements, I don't believe. I'd like to give a little testimony. When that time place motel opened up out of the outlet mall, we went in there to see if they would accept Gideon Bibles in there. Well, I went in there to ask them to We'll look at them and say, yeah, you know where this hotel is located, their headquarters? I'm like, no. She said, Salt Lake City. <laughs> I said, the Mormons? She says, I said, would you still like Gideon? She said, she says, well, place the Bible in along with the Book of Mormon. So there's a Book of Mormon out there and there's a Bible. And I thought that was very good. So the people do have a choice. And guess which one's going to win? Uh, you yeah. know it and I know it. <laughs> Stand please and we'll um, um, for the benediction. Uh, Heavenly Father, we thank you again for this day. We thank you for the ministry that Gideon is distributing the word of God throughout the world and through our own community. Um, bless them as they continue to do that. Help them as they continue to try to you know, recruit um, and to serve, as he mentioned it. Um, the interest seems to be dwindling on that like it is in many other places in your your work. So again, thank you for their work and thank you for the help that we can be in supporting it and for all this. Um, it was traveling horses as we leave today and we will bless this in your name and pray. Amen. Amen.